About 80% of our catchments are agricultural. Any practices that farmers do on their land affect the way the rivers react. So if you're putting nutrients like fertilizers on your land or you're putting pesticides on your land, that all has the ability to get into the river. So that's predominantly what we see. Phosphate, nitrates, pesticides and faecal matter from slurries. The reason we look at some of these smaller streams is because this is the exact place where these problems come in. It's not in the massive great big rivers down at the bottom. That's the difference between this diffuse damage where it's coming a little bit from everywhere and what you would call point source damage where it's a significant issue coming in one location. The River Foy has a very strategically important role in the infrastructure and supply of water in the whole region. We're affected by everything that goes on in the catchment, be it agriculture or small industry. And quite often there are pollutants come in from those various different industries and land uses. And that all has to be removed before the water is fit to put into the system to be circulated for consumption. It can be tremendously expensive. We can see costs doubling and tripling depending on the season and rainfall. Chemicals like chlorine are incredibly costly and the processes that are required to actually undertake the treatment are very energy rich and so they're incredibly costly. There are two ways to solve a problem with water quality. You can get a group of very clever people in a room and you can come up with a water treatment solution, a type of filter that does the job, be it a chemical filter or a physical filter. But recently we've started to look at solutions which increase the quality of the raw water before it comes into the treatment process. In the FOI we had about £300,000 approximately for investing in upstream thinking activities which are activities specifically designed to reduce pollution from agriculture and from the rural environment. So we wanted to know how best to apportion that and target that within the catchment to achieve the best result for water quality coming into the works. My name is Brett Day and I'm from the University of East Anglia, I'm a Professor of Environmental Economics. For many years I've been studying problems to do with the environment where people cause pollution problems and other people somewhere else in the system get affected by them. And quite by chance we came across a group, the West Country Rivers Trust, who were attempting to solve a problem very much like this with farmers who were going about their business on their farms but creating some sorts of pollution which were going into rivers and the water company, Southwest Water, who were having to treat that water downstream. What they wanted was some form of mechanism whereby the water company could pay the farmers to try and change the ways in which they farm to improve water quality. And that's where we came in. The solution we suggested was to use an auction. Farmers aren't unfamiliar with auctions. They come to cattle markets and they buy cows and they sell sheep through auctions. Of course, our auction isn't quite like that. Half, eight, half, nine, half, sixteen, half, one, half. We provided them a very simple tick sheet. They went through and told us what projects they wanted to undertake, what they wanted to be paid to do those projects. And between the rounds of the auction, we fed back to them, saying whether they were likely to be funded or not. So they could, between one round of the auction and the next, change their bid in order to make it more competitive. 47, 47, Willie. No, push forward if you can. There's all sorts of things that farmers could do to improve water quality. For a start, they might be able to just simply fence off rivers to stop, for example, their cattle getting into the rivers. Or they could concrete over their yards, making it easier for them to contain the pollution they create. Or they could create new slurry pits in which to store some of the, the waste materials that come from their farming. So lots of things that farmers could do which would, in effect, improve water quality in the rivers. Well, we run uh, 400 dairy cows and about 350 followers. So uh, livestock is what we're all about and producing milk. Our farm's grown over the last 10 years and we've put a lot of effort into our cow welfare and we've kind of grown using the same slurry system as we had before. We had looked into in the past into uh, increasing our slurry storage, but when this auction came around, uh, with the West Country Rivers Trust, it gave us the opportunity and the enthusiasm to go ahead and improve the system we had. So we've got the original slurry storage here and so, so the way to improve this was by creating a, a new larger store and from here it can be pumped to there and that much larger store provides say four to five months storage so that then having all this system in place that then allows them to go for two or three months if necessary without spreading. For our business 
This stops us going onto the land, reduces runoff, reduces pollution and improves water quality in the rivers. These nutrients are worth too much for me to let them wash away down the streams and it costs too much for South West Water to extract them from the water to uh, pump it round to all the houses and properties. We'll monitor the response, we'll monitor the amount of coagulant we use, we'll monitor the energy consumption of the plant, but that will all take a lot of time to develop a strong evidence base. But where we've done extensive case studies and we have some very good predictions, we, we feel that you can perhaps halve the water treatment costs. That will obviously be a benefit to the, the water company, but also DEFRA have published a statement of obligations to water companies which say in addition to your obligation to provide clean water there's a presumption that you'll look to do that in a way that benefits all these other objectives of the country including the water framework directive, the habitats and species directive. So all other things being equal between the new filtration plant and upstream thinking, upstream thinking has huge benefits for the wider natural capital of the region so we would choose that. It's really exciting. I mean, for years I've been teaching that these sorts of mechanisms would be a great thing to do. That if we could get together water companies and farmers and provide mechanisms through which private companies could pay for pollution improvements, this would be a brilliant thing to do. And to actually come down here, design an auction, put it into place and see the outcomes of that with farmers with new slurry pits and, and the water company enjoying improvements in their businesses, that's a great achievement, something that we don't get many opportunities to do, but something we hope we can do again and again now.